This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these repeatable background tiles using Adobe Illustrator. So let's go ahead and set up a new document in Illustrator. I'm going to use custom as the template. I'm going to size it at 1920 by 1920s and the unit of measurement is pixels. And I'll go ahead and click create. And what I want to do now is just set up the canvas so that we're all working with a similar workflow. So let me let me uh, come up here to where it says view. Let me move that back over. Let's come up here to where it says view. And we're going to want, uh, let me deselect snap to pixel. From this view menu, the only thing we're going to want selected is snap to point. And once you have that set, uh, just come over here uh, to where it says window and make sure you have align, color, and stroke enabled from this uh, from this uh, windows menu here and this will th th that's these windows down here uh, on the right hand side of the page that you see so what we're gonna do now is create a circle let me grab the uh, the rectangle tool right here if you click and hold on that you'll get this little flyout menu I'm gonna choose ellipse and I'm gonna come over here to the canvas and I'm just gonna click and drag and then hold shift and alt to create a perfectly symmetrical circle like that and what I want to do is get rid of the fill color because right now it's filled with white. I'm just going to click this red X right here to get rid of that fill color. And the black stroke, we want to leave that. I'm just going to change the size of it to 100. So come up here to where it says 1, change that to 100, hit enter. And now what I want to do is come over to the transform menu. It should be over here on the bottom right. If you don't see the transform uh, window, just go to windows and click on uh, transform and it should appear. All we want to do here is just make sure we have where it says scale strokes and effects. Make sure that's unchecked for the duration of this tutorial. Otherwise, what we're going to do won't work. Once we've done that, uh, let me go back to the select tool. I'm going to change the width of this uh, to uh, 300. But before I do that, I just want to make sure I have this lock icon enabled. Where it says W for width, I'm just going to change this to 300. Hit enter. And now I want to come over here to the align menu. And make sure you have the align too. Make sure it's set to align to artboard. And I just want to center this up on the horizontal and vertical axis like that so it's centered up on the artboard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit, copy, and then go to edit, paste in place. And what that did was it created another copy and, and laid it right on top of it. Only you can't see it because they're stacked directly on top of each other. But what I'm going to do is change the size of them and then you'll see it. So up here where it says width, I want to add 400 to whatever this width is. So I'm going to add 400 to 300. That's going to be 700. Hit enter, just like that. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'll go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And I'll change the width of this one. Again, we'll add 400, which would be 1100. And then I'm just going to repeat the steps a couple of more times. I'll just go to edit, copy, paste in place, add 400, which would be 1500. And then one more time, copy, paste in place and change this one to 1900. So what I'm going to do now is, let me just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and roll down the mouse wheel once like that just to zoom out. I'm going to click and drag over all of these objects so I have all of them selected and I'll go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And once I've done that I want to go to Object, Compound Path, and choose Make. And now I just want to bring down the size of this a little bit so it's a little further away from the edges of the document. I'm going to hold Shift and Alt. Actually, no, I'm going to grab one of these nodes over here on the side, then hold Shift and Alt and just scale that down a little bit like that. That right there looks pretty good. Let me zoom back in. We just want to make sure it's away from the pages, the edges of the pages. What I want to do temporarily is just go to View and turn on Smart Guides. And then I want to grab the Rectangle tool. I'm going to click on the Circle tool and then grab Rectangle from that menu. And I want to snap the cursor onto the left edge, the left edge in the center of this, uh, this circle right here. And then just click and drag and create a square coming up to the top center until it snaps onto the anchor point like that. Right there. And once you've snapped it onto the anchor point, let me go to the select tool. I'm going to click and drag over both of these objects. And then I'll come over here to the Pathfinder menu. Again, this should be active. If not, just go to Windows and click on Pathfinder and it'll open that menu for you. And with them both selected, I want to choose Intersection right here. And once I've done that, I want to make a copy of this. I'm going to click and drag, then hold Shift and Alt to create a copy of it and put it out here like this. And I just want to rotate this around now. In order to rotate it, if you bring the cursor to the outside corner, of the uh, object there. You'll notice that the uh, cursor turns into a, a rotation icon. And once you get that, you can just rotate it around like this. You could hold shift so it locks onto uh, 45 degree angles like that. Go ahead, let that go right there. 
And let me turn off Smart Guides now. I'll go to View, Smart Guides, turn that off. And now I want to take this and snap it onto the edge there. So let me zoom in. Again, I'm holding Alt and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. I'm going to hold Control, and as you're holding Control, you're going to get these nodes that appear. You can grab one of those nodes, and remember, you're holding Control the whole time here. Snap it onto this corner right here. Just like that. Now let me zoom out a little bit. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of uh, this one right here. Click and drag, then hold Shift and Alt to bring that down there. And again, I'm going to rotate this around while holding Shift. Let me zoom back in, hold Control, grab this node and snap it right there onto that corner. And now what I want to do is I want to take this object here and create a duplicate of that. So click and drag it, then hold Alt, and then hold Control and grab one of the nodes and snap it onto the edge right there. You may have to zoom in a little bit to make sure. Okay, there we go. And once we've snapped that onto there, I want to take this object and I just want to make this a different color just so we can differentiate it from the other objects. I'm just going to change this to like red or whatever you want, whatever color you want to go with, just go ahead and use that. And now what I'll do is I'm going to take this object, click and drag it and hold Alt so it creates a copy. And I want to grab Control, hold Control, grab this node and then snap it onto this corner right here so that we end up with an object like this right here. Now let's click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to take this object and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Same thing with this object over here, we'll get rid of that and get rid of that. Those were just reference objects so that we can know where to position these. This is what we're going for right here. We want to take this right here. And what I want to do now is I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to go to the Shape Builder tool, which is over here, or you can press Shift and M on the keyboard. And I want to get rid of the areas where the black and the red intersect with each other going in here. So I'm going to hold Alt and then I'll click on that and then it's gone. Do the same thing over here. Hold Alt, click on that and it's gone. Over here, click on that one and then that one. And that right there is what we're going for. We're looking, we're looking to get rid of the red, the red, anything that's red that intersects with the inside of the uh, black stripes here to get rid of them. And once we've done that, I'm just going to click and drag through all of these and select them all to unify them all together into one shape like that. Now let me zoom out a little more. Let me grab the select tool. I'm going to bring this to the top left over here. I'm going to create a copy of this. I'm going to click and drag and then hold shift and alt. And then I want to rotate this one around like this. And then I'm going to hold control. Let me zoom in a little bit. Hold control, take this node and snap it onto there like that. Let me zoom out a little bit. And now I want to take this object and duplicate this again. I'm going to hold, I'm going to click and I'm going to click and drag then hold shift and alt like that. And then I'll rotate this around until it flips it vertically like that. And now let me hold control, grab one of these nodes and snap it onto there like that. And if you click off of it, you can see we now have this single individual object here. And if you take this object, you can tile it next to each other infinitely and it creates a seamless pattern. So let me click and drag over all of these right here. I want to just unify them together with the, uh, the Unite tool, uh, the Unite button under the Pathfinder menu like that. And let me hold Shift and Alt and scale that down a little bit. Let me zoom in. What you can do is you can take this, hold Shift and Alt to create a duplicate, and then snap it right next to each other like that. And do the same thing. You could take this, bring this down there, and snap it onto there like that, just repeating the same steps we previously did. And this will go on infinitely. You can do this over and over and over again, and it creates an infinite seamless pattern from this one individual square right here. So once you're done, you could take this one individual square and export this as a PNG graphic or any other format that you'd like. And then you could upload this to like a background of a website, and it'll repeat infinitely regardless of the screen size of the, uh, the end user. So uh, I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating that simple, seamless background pattern using Adobe Illustrator. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.